Hey everyone, I wanted to do a video series called What's That Charge? And basically I wanted to do some informative videos around criminal convictions, the difference between certain misdemeanor charges and felony convictions. There's first degree felony, second degree felony, third degree felony, misdemeanor A, misdemeanor B, state jail felony, federal offenses. So there is such a wide range of different charges and convictions. And over the last decade of owning this staffing agency for second chances, meaning we take people out of prison and help them find meaningful employment, I have seen so many different scenarios and situations that look really, really bad on paper, but the reality isn't as bad as it looks. And the opposite to be true sometimes as well. Sometimes what's on paper isn't as bad as what really happened because there was a plea deal. And so I'm doing these videos just to kind of help companies who are becoming more progressive and opening up their doors to second chance hires and creating a second chance policy. Um, just, to, just to help with the understanding of what they're looking at when they're seeing a conviction. I will start with a disclaimer that I am not a criminal attorney, surprise, um, and I don't, I don't ever want to be. So I am not trying to be a criminal attorney. I am simply speaking based off our experiences and things that I've seen and things that I've learned and you could have a different experience, you may live in a different state, things may be different, things change all the time. So um, please just bear with me as I'm explaining different things that I've seen. And if you feel that I've said something that is not accurate for your personal experience or your state, feel free to post in the comments, it will help people learn. But everything that I am going to talk about in these videos are things that I've personally witnessed and seen with my own two eyes. So the first thing we are going to talk about because um, admittedly it's the easiest topic for me is felony DWIs. So your company may not be a company that will hire people with felony convictions and so when somebody has a DWI usually you'll be able to hire them because a lot of times a DWI is simply a misdemeanor A or a misdemeanor B. Now the difference between misdemeanor A and misdemeanor B is just a difference in usually how intoxicated that person was or if it's their second offense. So if it's your second offense, usually it will be a misdemeanor A versus a misdemeanor B. Um, my personal experience when I got my DWI, I'm very open about my alcoholism in the past, um, it started as a misdemeanor A because of my BAC, because of how high I blew. So um, I ended up taking the plea deal and getting a misdemeanor B, but a misdemeanor A would have simply meant that I would have had to spend more money and fees and take more classes and spend more time on probation. So as the person who is being charged and convicted, I was very excited to go from a misdemeanor A to a misdemeanor B. But when does the DWI, and again, I'm speaking for Texas, when does the DWI turn into a felony? So I'll give you scenario number one. Scenario one, you get off work, you pick up your daughter from school, and your one of your friends calls you and says, hey, I just got my kid from school, let's meet at this restaurant up the street and have a couple of margaritas. You have a couple of margaritas, you get in your car, you're not feeling too buzzed, but you feel a little tipsy and you get pulled over. If you blow over um, 0.08, then you end up getting a felony DWI because you have a child in the car. So that's an example of how easy it can be to have a felony conviction on your record as it relates to having a DWI, which is usually a misdemeanor. Another way that a DWI can be a felony is whenever, uh, I'll give another scenario. So you leave the club one night and you are um, drunk 
and you hit somebody from behind and the person in front of you broke their wrist on the steering wheel. Because there was bodily harm, because that person broke their wrist, it is now a felony DWI. Now, of course, like I said, none of this stuff is black and white or set in stone. That person, if it was their first offense ever, could possibly, if they have a great attorney, take a plea, a plea deal and bring it down to a misdemeanor A or a misdemeanor B. And as the person that's, you know, the defendant, you're really hoping for that to happen. So again, not everyone's going, everything I'm telling you, not everyone's going to share the same experiences because charges and convictions and sentences like range like so far, it blows my mind sometimes that how the things that I see on paper versus what actually happen or um, different people with the same stories having totally different convictions, right? And then a third scenario is, let's say that you are driving, you already have two DWIs and you get pulled over and this is your third DWI. Um, In the state of Texas, once you have that third DWI, it can be a felony. So, and on the criminal background, if you are pulling up somebody's background, it'll say felony DWI, third or more, right? So, those are some uh, examples of how a DWI can become a felony, and if you are making a job offer to somebody and... They tell you they have a DWI and you tell them like, hey, that's fine. Our company will hire people with DWIs, no problem, because typically it's a misdemeanor. If it comes back as a felony, these are some of the reasons it could be. Now, again, I'm saying it could be. There could be all kinds of other things that made it a felony, um, but those are just some examples. And so if you are a company that has opened up your door to second chance hiring and you have a policy in place, then you can talk about some of these things with that candidate if you really want to hire them to kind of just understand what happened. Um, I always urge people not to... So at Cornbread Hustle, we're not asking you about your past and learning more about what happened because we want to reject you. We are doing it because we want to advocate for you and find the companies that are willing to accept that type of charge. So I never suggest asking somebody about their past if their if their background already falls into the policy that you've already set in place. But if it's somebody that you want to hire and they fall outside of the policy, let's say you don't take felonies and it's a company policy and you want to go to the higher ups and vouch for that person. That's whenever it could help to get a little bit more details on how a charge had become a felony. So that's all I got for today. Um, In the next videos, we'll go over all types of things, including manslaughter, assault with a deadly weapon, sexual misconduct, um, a controlled substance, possession of a controlled substance. What is a controlled substance? When does it, like, why is it a felony? What different types of drugs fall into um, felony range? And um, how, I mean, there's even, I've already done videos on this on um, people who have been pulled over with a vape pen. And that is considered, even though it's just THC, and usually being pulled over with weed is simply a misdemeanor Once you have it in the vape pen, it is considered a felony. So I'll be talking about that in some upcoming videos as well. Hopefully this is educational for you guys and um, inspirational. Maybe it can help you with talking to your higher ups about second chance hiring and kind of seeing things through a different lens and a different perspective. That's all I got today. Bye guys.